Okay, we're going to reproduce a figure from the video paper that shows uh, how to compare um, subproblems in a four-dimensional space. And so we have this data, and this is available on the AeroViz website, that is uh, a parameter file and then an output file for this LTM problem. And so uh, I'll just open the two files to show you what they look like. And you can see that the parameter file is fairly simple. All it says is which of the output files we're going to be looking at. And you can have multiple files in here separated by different tags. And then the data for the objectives, which column they're in, the minimum and the maximum plotted, uh, whether they're minimum or max minimized or maximized, which axis they're going to be plotted on, and so forth. And then the data is just tab-separated data that has headers that indicate which of the you know which column corresponds to which variable and then you also have um, headers for the generationals uh, data that means if you have multiple generations in this file you can have multiple values for each generation here so all we have to do now is just open AeroViz and open up the ltm.par, which is the parameter file. You can see that the solutions come up uh, pretty quickly. So we have cost, error, and uncertainty shown uh, on the axis, and then mass is on color. And in order to change the axis, you can also use these plot control buttons. But what I want to walk you through is just a, a really quick example um, that illustrates some of the features of the program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be turning some solutions on and off, and I want to show the whole set when I do that. So in Plotting Preferences and the Glyphs tab, I have um, I can turn on this Show Inactive Solutions, which will make the solutions have transparency that we're not looking at right now. And I'll set this to 0.5. Okay, so that gets us ready to start doing some non-dominated sorting on some of the smaller problems. So we're going to look at the trade-off between cost and error. And when I do this, all I have to do is click Perform Sort, and you can see that the solutions uh, are shown. You have to make sure that you hit Enter on this other thing. Okay, so you can see now that these solutions are shown a little bit darker. Let's actually lower the transparency slightly and so now you can see these solutions are shown and then what we can do now is mark them okay and when I mark them the marking tools comes up and you can see that this set is shown in a certain color so we can call this set the cost error trade-off in red and so now what I can do is I can revert to the full set and I can do another uh, trade-off I can do the cost uncertainty trade-off then when I perform the sort, you'll notice that those solutions uh, are in a different part of the set. And I can do the same thing. I can mark them. They come up down here. I can change the color. And now we can really start to see where those subproblems live in this, uh, in this example. Uh, so that's it. And you can play around with the non-dominated sorting tools and the marking tools to start to look at individual solutions. Uh, the last thing I'll just mention is that you can look at the properties of each solution by, by double clicking. You can mark an individual solution. You can show the design in a plugin, or you can just simply look at the properties of the solution and it will show you uh, all the objective function values, other values that you're plotting, and then which markings uh, are on the solution.